Hello everyone, I'm back and today I have a video and we're going to be making one of my most favorite kinds of quilts, a t-shirt quilt. In today's video, we're going to be making a t-shirt quilt with sashing and cornerstones. Can't wait to bring you along in this process. Today's video is going to be on the shorter side because we are only constructing the top together. If this is the first quilt that you've ever made and you're wondering how to choose a batting for your quilt, how to sew together your backing, how to cut your binding, how to quilt your quilt, I have tons of related videos down in the description box. I've added links so that when you're ready to get to that part of making your quilt, you can check out those videos. I think you'll find them really helpful. So who's ready to get this quilt started? Let's go. For this quilt, I was given 20 t-shirts. So I'm gonna go through and select the 20 best logos for this quilt. We'll work with this gray shirt and I'll set the others aside. I'm gonna show you how I separate the front from the back of the t-shirt. We're gonna move through this part of the process really quick. I do have a full tutorial that I'll put a link down in the description box below. If you are brand new to making t-shirt quilts and you wanna watch a full tutorial, you can check out that link and that full tutorial. So I'm just gonna separate the front from the back of the shirt, choose the best logo between the two, and then the logo that I'm not going to use in the quilt, I will fold up and return to my client. Once we have all of our shirts separated, the next thing we're gonna do is determine our block size. So go through and measure each one of your logos and figure out a block size that works best for your quilt. Once you know your block size, you can go ahead and prepare your interfacing. For this quilt, my favorite interfacing to use is the Pelon P44F. I'm just gonna walk you through the process as I measure out and cut 20 pieces of stabilizer. I like to cut my uh, interfacing about an inch bigger on all sides. And so now that we know the size of our block, we can go ahead and measure. And I'm just going back and forth with my bolt of interfacing. We're gonna go back and forth 20 times. This is the quickest way that I have found for me to prepare 20 pieces of interfacing. Just going back and forth and using my ruler, to, uh, my ruler to hold down the interfacing. I just repeat this process back and forth until I have 20 layers. This is gonna be a little redundant to show, but I want you to see uh, how I do it in case you're looking for a speedy way to prepare lots of pieces of interfacing for your quilt. Once we have the 20 layers, I'm gonna to go to the right side and I'm gonna cut the little loop where we went back the other direction. Right along that edge, cutting each one of the loops, folding them back and cutting the next one until we make it all the way through the stack. Then I'll go to the other side and we'll cut all of these loops on the left side as well. I hold the top pieces that are cut over to the side and just trim right along through the stack. Once we get to the bottom, I'm gonna remove all of the top layers and grab that bottom one underneath my ruler. Now I'm gonna turn these the other direction and trim off the extra this way as well. This is gonna give me a stack of usable scraps for other projects. And now we have 20 pieces of interfacing ready to go. Now that we've cut apart all of our shirts, We've pre-cut all of our interfacing. We're ready to fuse the interfacing on the back side of our t-shirt logos. For this process, I am going to be using my new heat press. I'll put the settings that I've discovered 
so far that work best for my heat press and the interfacing that I'm using right here on the screen. You can do this with an iron if you are totally new. Again, I will put a link down in the description box of a video where I use an iron to fuse on my interfacing. You'll go through each one of your t-shirts and add the interfacing to the back side. And once you have all of that done, then we're ready to cut out our blocks. Once you're done with this step of the t-shirt quilt, I think you're done with the most tedious part of making a t-shirt quilt. So now we're ready to move on to cutting out our blocks. Your blocks can be any size that you would wish them to be. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to see a full tutorial on how to find and mark the center of your logos if you're using your cutting mat to cut out your blocks. Don't forget, you will have a quarter inch seam allowance on all four sides, and so uh, keep that in mind when you're determining the size of your block. Once you have all of your blocks cut, you can go ahead and play with the arrangement until you come up with one that you really like. I've sent a picture to my client and he has approved, so we are ready to start making some sashing. Now here we are with the fabric that I'm going to use for the sashing. We need to figure out how many pieces of sashing we want to cut. So let's take a look at this graph and I highly suggest you draw one out for the amount of blocks that you're using in your quilt. Draw little sashing pieces just like you see on the screen. Then you're going to count your pieces that go in between your rows and your pieces that go in between your blocks. Count the total number of pieces and then you're ready to cut. So here's my sashing fabric. I have doubled it over so I'm actually cutting through four layers at one time. You can cut your sashing as wide as you like. There's no set number to the width of your sashing. For this quilt I'm going to cut strips that are two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to go through and cut a whole bunch of strips. Let's see, for this quilt, I think I need 49 pieces of sashing. So we'll go through and cut 49 pieces that are two and a half inches wide. Once I have my strips, I'll turn them the other direction. And now we are going to cut our sashing two and a half inches by the length of our cut blocks from our t-shirts. For my quilt, the quilt that we're making today, my blocks are exactly 15 inches wide and 15 inches long. So I'm going to cut these sashing pieces at 15 inches long. We'll count over 15 inches, place our ruler, and before I cut all of these strips, I'm just going to double check my measurements, count one more time, 15 inches over, and then I'll make my cut. Cutting through all my strips just like this, I can save all of these off cuts for future scrappy projects. And here are my sashing pieces for my quilt. And I'll just repeat this process until I have the desired number of sashing. Bringing in our cornerstone fabric, I'm ready to go ahead and cut those. Again, I'm cutting four layers of fabric all at once just to speed up the process. The cornerstones for your quilt will be cut with the same measurements that you use for your sashing. So my sashing is two and a half inches wide. I will cut my cornerstones two and a half by two and a half. If you cut your sashing at three inches, you'll cut your cornerstones three inches by three inches, so on and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my cornerstones, get those ready to go. And they should be the same width as your sashing. 
The very first thing I like to do when piecing together a t-shirt quilt that has sashing and cornerstones is to piece together the strips that go in between my rows that include my cornerstones. I have my machine set on a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to do some chain piecing today to speed things up. Let's line up a cornerstone to the raw edge of our piece of sashing. I have six rows of sashing with cornerstones. So I'm just going to go through six pieces of sashing, adding six cornerstones and sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. Chain piecing is a great way to speed up the piecing part of your quilt top. Just trying to be really careful to maintain an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. We'll go through and do this six times, adding our first cornerstone. Let's speed this up a little bit. We've finished adding our first six cornerstones. I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and separate each one of my six units. Now we have our first cor cornerstone right here. We're going to flip this piece of sashing over and add a cornerstone to the opposite side of our first piece of sashing. Again, lining up the raw edges and sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. You'll do this for each piece of sashing. Bring you through as we add the six cornerstones. Once we're done, we can separate each one of our units. And now we're ready to add our second piece of sashing. So let's flip over that cornerstone. The right side is up and we're going to place the right side of our next piece of sashing down. Line up those raw edges and continue to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. We'll add our second piece of sashing to each one of the six units. We will speed up this process just so you can see me going through the motion of each one of these six pieces of sashing. Once you're done adding the second piece of sashing, we're ready to repeat the process with a cornerstone. And we're just going to alternate between sashing and cornerstones until we've sewn together complete rows for the entire width of our quilt. Once you're done adding all of your pieces, you're ready to press your seams. So I have all six pieces of my sashing that go in between my rows here on my pressing board and I'm going to press my seams towards the sashing. So not towards the cornerstones, we're going to press it towards the long piece, the sashing. This will give us nice and flat seams when we join our rows together. And I'll do this for each one of our seams. So for each one of my six sashings, I'm just going through 
and pressing all of the seams. And you'll do this for however many rows of sashing that you have. Give them all a good quick press. And once you're done pressing all of these seams, we can set our sashing to the side. We're ready to add some sashing to our t-shirt blocks. Let's take a look at what this looks like up on the board. So we're coming along already. I think this looks fantastic. Now let's grab our sashing and move over and pull some t-shirt blocks off the wall and start sewing. So many of you have watched my previous t-shirt quilt series and so you know that I'm a huge fan of glue basting with my t-shirt quilts. Today I'm using Elmer's glue wall and yes it does wash out of your quilts when you're done and it makes piecing so much more precise. So that's what we're doing today. I'm at the iron. I have my sashing pieces and I'm working with my first block on the left on my first row. I add a small bead of glue to both raw edges and I'm going to place a sashing piece on both raw edges and fuse that to dry the glue. Then I'll pull over block number two of row one and I'm going to add a sashing to the right side and we will do this for the remaining other blocks in the row. Your sashings will be added to the right side only. So block one, you add two sashing pieces and then the remaining blocks in the row, add a sashing piece to the right. Again, I'm just using a small amount of glue. I am using a pressing cloth and that protects your iron from any runover glue and it protects the graphics on your t-shirt as well. With our sashing glue basted into place, we're ready to start sewing at the sewing machine and I have my machine set up to a quarter inch seam allowance. And now I'm just going to chain piece all of my blocks, sewing the sashing down and making sure to keep a really accurate, nice and straight quarter inch seam allowance. Go through and do the pieces that have just one piece of sashing on them. And then we'll get down to our first block, which has a piece on the left and right. So we'll sew this right side, remove it from the machine, and then just flip this block right around and sew down the other sashing as well. Now we have all of our sashing sewn down, let's press. Coming back to the iron, now we're going to do two things. We're going to press our seams with our sashing that we just added to our t-shirt quilt blocks. We are pressing our seams towards the sashing. This will allow us to nest our seams when we add our rows. Give us a nice flat seam. You can use a pressing cloth if you're afraid of getting the iron too close to your logo graphics. And once you've pressed your sashing nice and flat, we're going to attach all of our blocks together in our row. And again, I'm going to glue base them. You'll see I'm working with my very first block in the row. On the right side, I'm going to add a small bead of glue. Then bring over block number two and the raw edge of that block will be matched up to the raw edge of block one with the sashing. Working with the glue, you have plenty of time to make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And then I'll cover this with a pressing cloth and dry the glue with a good hot iron. I like to set my iron at a cotton setting and I like to use steam. It just helps dry the glue very quickly. And with the pressing cloth in place, I'm not worried about messing up the fabrics underneath. 
Once the glue is dry, and this only takes a second or two, we can remove the pressing cloth. We're gonna flip over block number two, add another bead of glue to the right side of block number two. We'll bring over block number three and glue base that into place. We'll flip that open and run a bead of glue and repeat for block number four. Now, of course, you might have more blocks that you're working with in your rows for your quilt. So you just repeat the process, adding all of your blocks together just like this. For my row, I will have three seams to sew to attach everything together in this row. Now we can go back to the sewing machine one more time. Coming back to the sewing machine, I still have my seam allowance set at a quarter inch. Starting with the very bottom seam of my row, I'm just gonna sew from top to bottom. I'll remove it from the machine. Now I can flip that behind the row and I can sew seam number two. From top to bottom, we'll remove that from the machine and then we have one more seam to finish this row. And now we're ready to press our seams one more time to finish up this row. Now we're ready to press the seams that we just did together. Again, we are pressing our seam allowance towards the sashing for each one of our seams. Working from the back, I do like to use a pressing cloth. It just protects the pellon that I've fused to the back. And now let's take a look at where we are. Looking at the design wall, you can see our very top row is complete. Now you just repeat this process, adding your sashing to your rows with your t-shirt blocks, pressing and moving all the way through the quilt. Once you've added the sashing to each one of your t-shirt quilt blocks and formed your rows, your quilt should look just like this. Now we're ready to combine our sashing with our rows. Now you could certainly bring your row and your sashing straight to the sewing machine, hold your sashing in place and sew everything down. Because we've nested the seams and sewn them in opposite directions, that would be pretty easy to do. You could also pin baste your sashing into place. One of my favorite things to do, however, is to use the glue and glue baste my sashing right in place. This allows me for an almost perfect placement, lining up my cornerstones with my blocks or my row underneath. The glue stays wet while you're working with it and so it allows for a little bit of maneuvering and positioning to get everything just right. And then drying the glue with a good hot iron dries it very quickly and we're not bringing any wet glue to the sewing machine. Now we're working with the very first row, the very top row. I am adding a sashing, sashing strip to the very top of this row, all the way from one side to the other and nesting those seams in the cornerstone areas. And then with our first row, we're going to turn it the opposite direction and add a sashing strip to the bottom of this row as well. And we're gonna do both of these sashing strips with this first row. Now for each additional row that you add to your quilt, you'll only be adding a sashing strip to the bottom of your row. So just keep that in mind as you progress through your quilt that after your first row, you're only adding the bottom sashing. Working my way across the quilt on the bottom, 
lining up those seams and they catch together perfectly. And once we're done glue basting the second sashing strip, we're ready to go over to the sewing machine. After drying the glue with a good hot iron, we're ready to sew down our sashing. Remember, this is our first row. We will have two pieces of sashing to sew down. Then for each additional row, we're just only sewing one piece of sashing to the bottom of our rows. I'll bring you along as I sew down the sashing for this first row. And you'll repeat this process all the way through all of the rows of your quilt. Once you're done sewing, let's go press these seams nice and flat. We're going to open up this sashing and press our seams towards the sashing again. Being really careful with your iron near your logos. You could use a pressing cloth if you'd like to do that. Working on this first row, I'm just going to press both sashings as we work from one side of the row to the other. Pressing that seam nice and flat. Once we have our seams, Pressed, we can bring in our second row and start assembling our rows together. Once you've added the sashing to each one of your rows, you guessed it, I'm going to glue baste each one of my rows together. So I'm bringing in the second row face down onto the bottom of the first row. And again, I'm just going to glue baste. You can certainly use pins if you'd rather do that. I'm gonna dry the glue with my iron and work from one side of the row to the other, lining everything up. Once the glue is dry, I can go back to the sewing machine and we're going to join row one and row two together. We're at the sewing machine again and now our quilt is going to start growing in size as we join our rows together. Just keep in mind the straighter your seam, the straighter your quilt's going to turn out. Sewing from one edge to the other. And once we're done, we can press that seam. And this is really it. You're just gonna keep repeating this process for each additional row that you add to your quilt. So it doesn't matter how many blocks you have in your quilt. It doesn't matter how many rows you have in your quilt. You just keep repeating the process all the way from the top first row to the bottom row. Now let's take a look at my finished quilt top. I think the orange really complements this Harley Davidson t-shirt quilt so much. I definitely think that adding sashing and cornerstones to your t-shirt quilts 
adds a lot of color and interest to your quilt tops. It also sometimes adds much needed separation when you have lots of blocks that are all the same color. So I hope you found today's video really helpful. I hope it takes away the daunting feeling of adding the sashing and the cornerstones and that this video walked you through the process and really made it more simple to do this kind of quilt with your t-shirts. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comment section. I'll try to be really quick in getting back with you and I'd love to hear from you. If you've made quilts like this or other kinds of t-shirt quilts, I'd love to see them. You can join me on Facebook at Lisa Cape and Quilts. I'll put a link down below. You can share your pictures really easily on the Creative Crew group. So if you haven't joined that, there will be a link for that down below. Lots of links in today's description box. It's been really fun hanging out with you today in my studio. I'm off to load this onto the long arm and get it quilted and delivered to my client. Thanks for watching. I appreciate having some time with you in your busy week. I'll see you really soon. Have fun creating. Bye.